the evening second race on the gate and the gate's on the move one Fernhill Jill and Bob McGinnis Islander of Anna two for Willie Murphy three is all happy time and Cal McQuarrie Silverwood Diane four Alex McPhee somewhere special five and Claude Portier NS Calypso six Claire McDonald Fun Fair seven and Bernard McCollum Deer Lane is eight Von Doyle second race race time there they go off stride on the outside is Fun Fair getting away Fern Hill Jill is leaving at the rail now Island Rovana is second up on the outside somewhere special moving after them in third at the rail Deer Lane is fourth though happy time now racing the inside fifth, pacing six, Silverwood Diane. Then in seventh, that's NS Calypso. And the trailer, after the break, leaving his fun fair on the way to the opening quarter mile. And somewhere special finds that special spot right on the choo choo in line to Claude Portier. Opener was 29 and one. Pacing second up the rail is Fern Hill Jill. Racing up third is Island Rovana. Fourth pull on the inside. As they move on by the three eighths, that's Deer Lane. Pacing fifth is Old Happy Time. Silverwood Diane now is sixth. Pacing seventh, NS Calypso. And the trailer in the backfield, that is Fun Fair. Approaching the opening half mile. Somewhere special. It's a three length lead on Fern Hill Jill second. Pacing third, Island Rovana. Opening half mile, they were there. Racing now to the 5 8 And on the front, somewhere special at the half. 59 one fifth on their way now to three quarters somewhere special Fern Hill Jill second Island Rovanda now swings out third and at the rail Deer Lane drops back fourth oh happy time is fifth pacing six NS Calypso Silverwood Diane is seventh and the trailer Fun Fair is eighth by three quarters in one thirty flat they're racing round that upper turn for the second and final time and Island Rovanda now comes on to take over. Somewhere special is second. Fern Hill Jill starts to fade quickly at the rail now. They're driving on down the lane. Island Rovana somewhere special is second. NS Calypso closing in third at the finish. Island Rovana. Here they are. Now returning into the winner's circle from the second race, number two is Island Ravana. They pacing there, a five-year-old daughter of Chameleon. From the Albatross Dam, Bethana Hanover. Owned by Bernard and Mary Farrell of Montague. Bernard does the training. Willie Murphy's in the driver's seat, and he will drive this mare to a new pacing record. Mile in 201 flat on to Island Ravana in the second. Here are the official racing results now in the second race. It's official. One Fern Hill, Jill, six. Two Island Ravana, the winner. Three O Happy Time, fourth. Four Silverwood, Diane, seventh. Five Somewhere Special was third. Six NS Calypso finished second. Seven Fun Fair was eighth. Eight Deer Lane, fifth. Fractions were 29 and one. 59 and one. 130. Mile and 201. Rechecking 614. 73285. Dollars. On third race post parade, number one stern warning is on below instead of Montague, Walter Chevrolet driving. Number two is Casimir Natchez, on by Alexander McRae, Mount Buchanan, Von Doyle drives. Three is mixed feelings, on by Edward Ramsey, Bonshaw, Len McGuigan up. Four is Don't Fold, owned and driven by Bing Easter from O'Leary. Number five, Auto Club, owned by Mac McDonald, Stratford, Cal McQuarrie driving. Six is Midnight Accolade, owned by Peter Dunfield from Windsor, Ronnie McLean driving. Seven is Chabret, owned by Bob Bonus, Kennedy, and Gary Chappell drives. Rounding out the field, number eight is Too Fun to Be Illegal. Owned by Glenn and K. Rogerson of Summerside, the driver is Wade Myers. Eight minutes wagering time tonight's third race, starting the seventh straight with the Triactor and Extractor also featured. If you wager now, you'll avoid the disappointment of being shut out eight minutes before post time.
Evening's third race. Lining upon the gate, one is Stern Warning and Walter Chavery. Casimir Natchez, two, Von Doyle. Mixed Feelings, three, and Len McGuigan. Don't Fold, four, Bing Easter. Auto Club, five, and Cal McQuarrie. Midnight Accolade is six for Ronnie McLean. Seven is Shabret and Gary Chapel. In the back tier, too fun to be legal is eight and Wade Myers. Here they come. And there they go. Off and pacing. Stern warning from the rail. Don't fall between horses. Far outside. Shabret is into the turn leaving. Too fun to be legal up the rail is fourth. Racing fifth is Auto Club. Casimir Natchez is sixth, then in seventh, mixed feelings on the outside, the trailer, Midnight Accolade. Going to the quarter mile, they're led early by Stern Warning, but here comes a Stern Challenger now. That is Shabred, going to clear the lead, in line to Gary Chappell. Stern Warning is second, and Chivalry wants him back on the front, and going to wheel him right from the two hole, the opener, 29 and one. Stern warning back to the front. Chabret now is second and don't fold. He's moving outside third. From the rail and racing fourth. That is too fun to be legal. Auto Club is tipped down to fifth. Then in sixth. From the rail is Casimir Natchez. From the outside seventh. That is Midnight Accolade. The trailer at the rail. Mixed feelings. They're halfway home in the third. Don't fold on the outside with a head in front. Stern warning up the rail is second. Chabret racing up tight and third. Auto Club on the outside, fourth. Opening half in a minute. Two fifths. Racing fifth. In at the rail is too fun to be legal. Casimir Natchez moved out sixth. Mixed fillings up the rail is seventh. Off stride the trailer. That was Midnight Accolade. They're going to three quarters now. Stern warning up the rail. And a whisker away on the outside is Don't Fold. Chabret in the pocket third. Auto Club is fourth. Casimir Natchez. He'll try a three wide move. Fifth. Three quarters in a 131 and two. Midway round the term of the final time eighth of a mile to come now and stern warning has opened up a three length lead and driving off now chevret up the rail is second don't fold coming on between them casimir notch is far outside third mixed feelings fourth here's a finish stern warning in the third here they are Now returning to the winner's circle in race number three, the one-entry stern warning, bay-pacing stallion, seven-year-old son of Nihilator. From the Nero Dam, Helene Lobel, on below stead of Montague, trained by Peter Lanigan. Walter Chevry is the winning driver, time for the mile in 202, and a four-fifths on one stern warning in the third. Here are the official results from the third race. One stern warning, the winner. Two Casimir Natchez, third. Three Mixed Feelings, sixth. Four Don't Fold, finished second. Five Auto Club was fifth. Six Midnight Accolade, finished eighth. Seven Shebred, fourth. Eight Too Fun to Be Legal, seventh. Fractions were 29 and one. One minute, two fifths. 131 and two. The mile in 202 and four. Rechecking 136, 258, 47. Race number four is up and coming. It's a news driving. Number two is Paranormal, owned and driven by Terry Gallant from Hunter River. Three is Esker Misty Day. The owner is Barry Criswell of York, and Barry will drive. Number four is Lance's Lady, owned by Clifford Aflect of Mount Stewart, driven tonight by David O'Brien. Number five is Phantom N, owned by Clarence Davis from uh, Mount Uniac, Jim Davis driving. Six is Northern Road, owned by Darren McDonald from Elmsdale, and uh, Dave Carey of Truro, Dave drives. Number seven is J.L. Cook, owned by Tim Mercetti of St. John, Tim driving. Number eight is Gene Zaxbird, 
Home by George Renison of Milford, Nova Scotia. George, aboard for the ride. Seven minutes wagering time now on the fourth race with no changes. Wager early and avoid being shut out. Claiming paces in tonight's fourth race, lining up on the gate. One is Paris Girl for Jason Hughes. Paranormal two, Terry Gallant. Esker Misty Day three, Barry Craswell. Lance's Lady four, David O'Brien. Phantom Man five, Jim Davis. Northern Roll is six, Dave Carey. J.L. Cook seven and Tim Mercetti. Gene's Expert eight, George Renison. Fourth race, here they come. They're off and facing Paranormal, Lance's Lady, and Phantom Man. The three of them love to leave, and they're leaving around the turn. Paranormal is going to have the say at the rail. Lance's Lady now is second, and Phantom Man is tucked in third. Racing fourth towards the inside is Paris Girl, now in fifth. That is Gene's expert on the outside, J.L. Cook is sixth. Facing from seventh, that is Northern Roll. And the trailer, that's Esker Misty Day. Approaching the opening quarter mile, and Terry Gallant has the front stepping. Paranormal on the lead. They arrived at the quarter in 29 and a three. Lance's Lady at the rail, the two-hole ride. Phantom, and he's watching them third. And now moving out. Fourth along the rail is Paris Girl, racing fifth on the outside. That is J.L. Cook. Then sixth at the rail is Gene's Expert. Northern Roll is moving out seventh. And the trailer, Esker Misty Day is eighth. They're halfway home in the fourth. Paranormal on top. Lance's Lady is second. Paris Girl is coming on at the rail to be third. The half in a minute. And one-fifth to the three-quarters they go. And Paranormal is widened by four. Lance's Lady is all alone in second. Paris Girl now is third. Gene's Expert fourth. J.L. Cook has taken over fifth. Then in sixth, Northern Roll. Seventh, Esker Misty Day. Now the trailer. That is Phantom in three-quarters in the box. One, 29 and two. Third quarter, 29 and one. Eighth of them all left to go. And a $2,000 claimer. Put it on a show now. It's all paranormal. Well back in second, Lance's Lady. Battle on for the show prize. Gene's Expert and J.L. Cook. But it's paranormal wire to wire. Here they are. Now returning to the winner's circle in race four, the number two entry is Paranormal. By pacing Stallion 5 by Paris Dexter from RHR Velvet by Nero. The owner, trainer, and driver, Terry Gallant of Hunter River. Horse on top all the way. Getting his third win in a row tonight. It's two minutes. Three fifths. That's the horse's 14th seasonal win. Paranormal in the fourth. Here are the official results in race four officially. One Paris Girl sixth. Two Paranormal the winner. Three Esker Misty Day seventh. Four Lance's Lady was second. Five Phantom Man finished eighth. Six Northern Roll was third. Seven J.L. Cook finished fifth. Eight Jeans Expert was fourth. Fractions were 29 and three. One minute, one fifth. 129 and two. Mile in two minutes, three fifths. Six one seven, two eight three, five four. Trenton's best call number one is on Belorn Simon of Hamilton, Karen McBay of Ancaster, Ontario, Gary Chapel Duffing. Number two is Ponnell Bay Dancer, owned by Gary McGuigan of Charlottetown, driven by Vaughn Doyle. Three is Hunter Angus, owned by Ken St. John of Beaverbank, Nova Scotia, Robert Laffin Driving. Four is Eagles Buff, owned by Jamie Bessie of Dunstaffin H, driven by Wade Myers. Number five is Edward Sealster, owned by Paul Doyle of Charlottetown, Shane Burner Kess driving. Six is BK's Trouble, owned by Byron Gamester of Hunter River, driven by Paul McDonald. 
Seven is Big John K, owned by Theodore McLeod of Westfield, Nova Scotia. George Renison driving. Number eight is Gabarro, owned by James McPhail of Calgary and Gary Lowther of Cavendish. Brian McPhee's in the sulky. Seven minutes wagering time, race five, no changes. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're wagering tonight, please wager early and avoid being shut out. They're closing in race five and seven in the province of Quebec and uh, we'll be up with a pregame show so to speak prior to that uh, maybe right around quarter past the hour that'll be Evening's fifth race on the way to the starting gate. One is Trenton's best call for Gary Chappell. Ponnell Bait answer two and Vaughn Doyle. Three Hunter Angus, Robert Laffin. Eagles buff four, Wade Myers. Five is Edward Seelster and Shane Bernard. BK's trouble six and Paul McDonald. Outside big John K is seven for George Renison. Trailing eight, Gabarro. For Brian McFay, it's race five post time at Charlottetown. Here they come. Third off and pacing, Hunter Angus leaving out. Punnel Bay dancer with him, then up the rail. That is Trenton's best call, racing third into the turn. From the inside, Gabarro is followed up fourth, racing fifth. That is Eagles buff. They all have rail spots early, but here comes Trenton's best Cole now. He's going to wheel outside to challenge Hunter Angus for the lead. From the rail in third is Punnel Bay Dancer racing fourth. That's Gabarro. Then on the inside, Eagles buff fifth. Pacing six is Edward Silster. Then in seventh, BK's trouble. He's moved out. And the trailer, that is Big John K. 29 and 2 was the quarter. They're over to 3 8, and Gary Chappell is made the lead aboard Trenton's best Cole now. In at the rail Hunter Angus gonna go second up tight in third. Punnel Bay Dancer from the rail Gabarro is fourth. Eagles buff fifth. Racing six on the outside is Edward Silster. Then in seventh up the rail is BK's Trouble and the trailer on the outside. Big John K is eighth. Opening half mile in 59 and a two. Midway around the paddock turn approaching the five eight and the leader, Trenton's best call. Hunter Angus is second and moving out. Third at the rail, that's Punnel Bay Dancer. Gabarro is fourth to the outside. Fifth at the rail, Eagles Buff. Sixth to the outside, 
Edward Sealster. Seventh, BK's Trouble. Big John K trailing the field by three quarters in one thirty and a three fifths. Midway around the turn. Final time. Eighth of a mile left to go. And it's Hunter Angus. Clear by three. Trenton's best call at the rail. Now second. Gavaroni outside is third. Racing fourth. That is Punnel Bay Dancer. They're in deep stretch now. And Trenton's best call. Getting up. Here they are. Now returning to the winner's circle in race five. One is Trenton's best call. Bay Pacing Gelding five by Young Cole. From the Trenton Dam, Trenton's We Miss. Owned by Lawrence Simon of Hamilton and Karen McBay of Ancaster, Ontario. Trained by Barry Bigger. Gary Chappell is in the driver's seat for the winning drive. Time of the mile in 201. And a three fifths. On number one, Trenton's best call in the fifth. Here are the official results. Race five officially. One Trenton's best call the winner. Two Punnel Bay Dancer second. Three Hunter Angus third. Four Eagles Buff finished fourth. Five Edward Silster was seventh. Six BK's Trouble finished sixth. Seven Big John K finished eighth. Eight Gabarro was fifth. The fractions were 29 and two. 59 and two. 130 and a three. And the mile in 201 and three. Rechecking top down, one, two, three, four, seven, six, eight, five. Number two, Katie's match, owned by Hollis Newson of Cornwall, driven by Kenny Arsenal. Number three, the Black Troopers, owned by Stephen Morton of Windsor, Nova Scotia, Ronnie McLean driving. Four is Stone Riggs Kid. Owned by Yvonne Favelle of Turo, Nova Scotia. Driven tonight by George Renison. Number five is Lot Like Mel, owned by Mel Land of Hopewell, Cape New Brunswick. Todd Trice driving. Six is Forest Hill Elixir. Owned by Sterling Constable, Earl and Lewis Power of Charlottetown. Toby McDonald in the sulky. Number seven is Gloria Scooter, owned by Wayne Webby of Dartmouth. Robert Laffin drives. Number eight is Presidential Gold, owned by Charles McDougall of Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia. David McDougall in the sulky. Seven minutes, sixth race post time. ...of the Maritimes and his son, uh, Sean, sees himself on television. Uh, first of all, Greg, welcome home. Thanks, Greg. Nice to be here for sure. And uh, you've got two horses. This is, just isn't a vacation for you. You've got two horses uh, competing tonight in the Gold Cup Trials. First of all, Glenn Roydon in the first elimination and Corey's big guy in the second. Uh, first of all, what led you to, to take these two home this year? Well, you had said something earlier, and I'm going to try and look at it that way to hold my emotions intact, that it's a vacation and we happen to take the horses along with us. But I've been coming here all my life, actually three generations, my grandfather and my father and mother and brother and everybody and uncle who are hopefully watching it at simulcast night and hello to them because I didn't get a chance to uh, call them. Actually, I didn't call and they weren't at home, but anyway, I wanted to say hello to them. And that's really why we came. It's a family thing, Nancy, my wife and her family, and this is something that we'd like to do when we decided it was time to do it. And uh, you mentioned that, uh, you know, when you go away, you're a native of the Maritimes. Is this something you've always wanted to do uh, when you thought the timing was right? Yeah, I really had to bring a couple of contending horses, and I think they have a good chance, but there's a lot of good horses in there and a lot of good drivers. I noticed everybody was saying because of the no-shows that it wasn't that good of a field. 
But uh, what you really have tonight, you got to remember, you have a guy like Mike McDonald. Yeah, I read in the yeah. Charlottetown Guardian that uh, the fact that this guy wants to go here, that Mike won the Gold Cup in Saucer six times. Uh, he's what uh, John Campbell is the North American Cup. Uh, so you have a guy like Mike who is always going to be tough to beat, and you have uh, drivers like Phil Pinckney, and you have the local horse El Perfecto. You have Force of Life from the Meadowlands. Uh, this, is a, this is a very competitive field, horses from Ontario, and the local horses, they always come up very well in these races. Let's talk specifically about the two horses you've, you've brought, uh, Glenn Royd on in and Corey's Big Guy. Can you tell us a little bit about these uh, two horses and uh, the path that's led them here tonight? Well, both of them are, are decent horses. Corey's big guy, obviously on paper, looks to be the better horse. Glenn Royden is a, is a quick little guy, good and a half mile track, and he's eager to go. Uh, he's 1-154 one and one and 3 at Freehold, so I looked for him to come up with a good effort. And also, Corey's big guy was second at Freehold in 154, uh, just beaten ahead, so and he'd only been on it, uh, hadn't been on it for a while, but he's also won it at Saratoga, so I look for, for him to be pretty good, too. But, you know, I've, I've said all along, Corey is the one that I look to be the you know, my heavy hitter, if you will. He's, he's my, my lead off or my, my starting pitcher, and then the other guy's kind of a backup, but hopefully they'll, they'll both show well. Now, uh, you claimed Corey's big guy. He hasn't made an actual uh, start for you at this point, but he did qualify well. Is that any concern, being that he hasn't raced in a while? Not really. I'll tell you what I did. I'd gotten him. We'd claimed him. He'd won like four out of five hundred to 150,000 claimers at the Meadowlands, and he dropped down to a little less than 65,000, and we claimed him. And uh, he didn't look good, so I wanted to give him time off. He'd gone probably about 60 starts without a break. Gave him time off and rested him and got him looking good and sounder. And he qualified in 53, so I think he's ready to go. He'll probably peak in a start or two, but he should show well. And what kind of a, a trip are you looking for with these horses tonight? Uh, obviously, uh, both drawing in mid-pack, uh, that, that's a pretty good spot on a half-mile track. You had to be happy with that. And, and what, what do you think uh, is going to be needed for them to hit the winner's circle tonight? Well, they'll both need good trips because you have good horses in there. If, if you look at uh, Glenn Royden, you've got Force of Life, who's been a good winner this year at the Meadowlands. They've actually raced against one another. And in Corey's big guys class, you have Southview Matt, who's had a good workout. And he's a very good horse. He's got 200 and some thousand dollars made. He raced in the Little Brown Jug. The Lawtons must have thought he had a chance to supplement him into it. So uh, we, we've got to get a good trip to beat them. All right, Greg, best of luck. Uh, I know it'll be a very happy winter circle tonight if the Pecs indeed uh, can get there with Corey's big guy and Glenn Royd on end. Greg, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Greg. All right, uh, we're less than two minutes away from post time. Good luck here in the upcoming sixth race. Sixth race. Going to the gate, and the gate's on the move. One sharp gussie, Pooker McCollum. Katie's match two, Kenny Arsenault. The Black Trooper three, Ronnie McLean. Stone Rake's kid four, George Renison. Lot like Mel five, Todd Trites. Forrest Hill Elixir six, Toby McDonald. Seven, Gloria Scooter and Robert Laffin. Eight is Presidential Gold and David McDougall. Here they come. And there they go. Off and pacing. And off stride at the rail. That sharp gussy now. And presidential gold having a little trouble getting around. They're into the turn and for the lead now. That is the Black Trooper. On the outside, Stone Ridge Kid is second. Moving up three wide and driving third is Forrest Hill Elixir. Now up the rail in fourth is Lot Like Mel. Pacing up into fifth. That is Katie's match. Then in sixth, Gloria Scooter. Pacing from seventh. That's sharp gussy. And up the rail is presidential gold. On by that opening quarter mile and Toby McDonald has moved Forrest Tilly Elixir on to the lead. Now second and moving out after a 29 and 2 opener and on the move on the outside and going back now for the lead. That is the Black River racing along the inside second Forrest Till Elixir watching them third as they move down the stretch approaching the opening half mile. That is Stone Rake's kid up and driving. Here comes Gloria Scooter driving to the front now in at the rail second the black trooper and the outside third as they move into the turn a lot like Mel fourth of the rail Forrest Hill Elixir 60 seconds flat 
opening half mile time and glorious scooter on the back stretch clear by three in at the rail the black trooper now second third on the outside force till elixir lot like mel fourth then in fifth katie's match six on the outside stone rigs kid presidential gold is seventh and the trailer sharp guessy one twenty nine and three at three quarters back stretch twenty nine and change and this is glorious scooter three-year-old matt scooter called he's undefeated and on the drive for five and he's home and cold glorious scooter in the sixth here they are judges do have an inquiry underway now in race number six judges inquiry in the sixth Now returning into the winner's circle in race number six, the number seven entry is Gloria Scooter, a bay facing called three, a son of Matt Scooter, from the Niatros Dam, JJ's Glorious. Owned by Wayne Webby of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Robert Laffin training and driving. This Colt undefeated in now five lifetime starts. Tonight he'll pace a final quarter in 29 seconds flat, and he'll go back to the barn with a new pacing record. Time for the mile, 158, three-fifths on seven. Glorious Scooter in the sixth. Date, two kiddies match. Finished fifth, was placed fourth. Three of the Black Trooper finished fourth place fifth for leaving the racing service and being lapped on at the finish. Four, Stone Rake's kid was seventh. Five lot like Mel finished second. Six fours till the elixir third. Seven glorious scooter, the race winner. Eight presidential gold was sixth. Fractions were 29 and two. One minute, 129 and three. And the mile in 158 and a three. Rechecking after the placings, eight, four, five, seven, two, three, one, six. Now wagering on the seventh race. With no changes, Alpine. Number one is Rymar Jim. On by Brian Ladner, Ray Murphy, and Keith Pagot of Charlottetown, driven by Paul McDonald. Number two is Rapid Chuck. On by the Boyd McDonald Produce Limited, Danny McDonald driving. The three entry, Rika's Playboy, is owned by Arthur Graham of Mabu, Nova Scotia. Huey McCauley will drive. Joanne McCauley is for Reading. Granite Cavalier for is owned by Ken St. John and DJ Short, Robert Laffin up. Five is Princetown Joy, owned by Harold Hilliford Alvin, driven by Wade Myers. Six is BJ Odyssey, owned by John Clary and Bert Honkoop of Montague. Bert will drive. Number seven is Rockland Heritage, owned by Olin Privet from Dartmouth, driven by Gary McDonald. Number eight, Captain Basie, is owned by Peter Smith of Charlottetown. Kenny Arsenal will drive. David O'Brien is parading. Seven minutes wagering time on the seventh race. Wager now and avoid being shut out. Extremely impressively. Uh, tell me what might be in store for this horse in the future. Well, we're hoping to take him to uh, the Confederation Cup in about two weeks if he shows good at the end of this week. We're hoping that he could probably pace him on 56 here before we take him. If he can't go in 56, we might as well stay home. But you've had uh, a lot of success uh, with this type of event in the past. Uh, Run the Hub was a horse that raced in Ontario and did extremely well last year. Uh, what about Glorious Scooter and his development? Is he where you would like him to be at this point? Well, we think so. Uh, he uh, he's, was a nice two-year-old, but he had some problems. And uh, this year, we kind of ironed them out a little bit better. Uh, he has a little bit of a problem and doesn't seem to make much difference when he goes behind the, behind the gate. Uh, he's a horse that has uh, extreme speed, and he has an easy way of doing it. So we're happy with that. 
you'd have to be, I would say, after that, uh, that performance. It was just outstanding. Uh, Run the Hub coming up, of course, in our first elimination heat in the APM Gold Cup and Saucer tonight. That's race number 11. Son Mark will be driving. Uh, tell me how the horse is feeling coming into this race. I think he should be all right tonight. Uh, we've had some uh, bad luck of racing. We were in Woodstock and kind of got interfered with. Uh, we raced at Truro and uh, just had a little bad racing luck. But we're hopefully uh, hopeful that we can get first or second tonight. And Mark had his first major victory, of course, with Run the Hub in the Levatt Memorial at Sydney earlier on this year. How does it make you feel to watch Mark uh, involved in the game to the extent uh, that he is, knowing the way that you've enjoyed the sport over the years? Well, that's a big thrill for me, of course, because he's my son, but uh, having been involved with it for so many, many years, and my father being involved, uh, it's really nice to see your own son out there driving and enjoying what he's doing. He really enjoys driving horses. And uh, tell me a little bit about your Gold Cup experience in the past, too. It's uh, well chronicled. Uh, you've had a lot of luck. What's it like to win the Gold Cup and Saucer? Well, the first time in 1972, I won it with a horse by the name of Prince Abbott. But uh, he was a real good horse. I was an amateur driver. But anyhow, the horse did the work for me. Um, we had three wins with Andy Sun, uh, pretty well back to back. They were pretty close together. And Phil Pinckney won with a horse by the name of Nickname, I believe, in 78 or 79. So we've won it five times. And it's a nice race to win, of course. What makes it so nice to win? I think it's a hometown uh, race. Uh, you get so many people from home here that, that know you. And it's, it's nicer to win in your own hometown. People travel for it, and I think there's a good uh, reason why they do, and you've hit the nail right on the head, Wayne. Uh, you mentioned your dad uh, very briefly, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that if we can. He's got a, a very uh, important honor coming up a little bit later this month, being inducted into the Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame. Uh, what does that mean to you? Well, Doug Hartness had a lot to do with that, of course. Uh, Doug did most of the work to uh, inform the people of the Hall of Fame uh, of Dad's credentials, and I appreciate it very much. And uh, Harold Howe, that works uh, with the uh, Trotter magazine or whatever up there, he, uh, he's done a wonderful job with the Hall of Fame. And it makes it a lot easier when you're dealing with these type of people. And also, uh, I think uh, it's nice for a person from down here to be inducted into something like that. It's very nice. It sure is. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a great ceremony, I know, for you to enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations, Wayne Webby, uh, for Glorious Scooter's performance tonight, and I want to say good luck as well with Run the Hub. Thanks a lot. That's Wayne Webby. Uh, glad he could join us tonight, three minutes before post time on the seventh race. Uh, it's upcoming as we've reached the midway mark on our program. Again, still to come, two eliminations in the APM Gold Cup and Saucer eliminations tonight from the CDP. Seventh race on the gate. Rymar Jim and Paul McDonald, Rapid Chuck, Danny McDonald, Rick is Playboy, and Ewan McCauley. Granite Campbell and Robert Laffin. Princetown Joy and Wade Myers, BJ Odyssey, Bert Honkoop, Rockland to Heritage, and Gary McDonald trailing Captain Basie for Kenny Arsenal. Seventh race, post time. Here they come. They're off and pacing. Rymar Jim leaving up the rail between horses. Rapid Chuck and from the outside, Granite Campbell are leaving. In at the rail, Captain Basie fourth, racing fifth. Rika is a playboy. Now moving up sixth from the outside. BJ Odyssey then up the rails. They go by the eighth. That is Prince Town Joy, the early trailer. Rockland to Heritage on route to the opening quarter mile. And up front, the leader. That is Rymar Jim in line to Paul McDonald. 
Captain Basie followed through at the rail to be second. Finding a spot inside third is Rapid Chuck. Granite Gambler is caught out fourth. They arrive at that opening quarter. They were there 29 and a two. Racing fifth at the rail is Rika's Playboy. Now Princetown Joy is sixth. Seventh PJ Odyssey. Moving to the outside the trailer. Rockland to Heritage H and they're on their way down the lane. Opening half mile is up and coming. Rymar Jim cutting it out. Two holes ride to Captain Basie. Racing third is Rapid Chuck. Granite Gambler on the outside is fourth. In at the rail, Rika's Playboy fifth. Outside, Rockland Heritage. Now sixth. Then in seventh, Princetown Joy. Trailing on the outside, BJ Odyssey. 101 and a one at the half. Over to 5-8, and it's still Rymar Jim showing the way. Captain Basie on his back. Granite Gambler laying on the outside is now improving to third. Way outside, B.J. Odyssey is on the move, fourth, racing fifth, now between horses, that is Rockland Heritage, on by three quarters, three lengths separate the field, they're on by the third station in one, 33, and one, three wide, and an eighth of a mile to go now, turning for home, here in the seventh, and the leader at the rail, Rymar Jim, Captain Basie is in the passing lane, B DJ Odyssey way on the outside. Here's a finish. Passing lane win for Captain Basie. In four by Basie. From the Dreammaker Dam, Shadows Ginny. All by Peter Smith of Charlottetown, trained by Clarky Smith. Kenny Arsenal's in the driver's seat. Time for the mile in 202. And a three fabs. On number eight, Captain Basie in the seventh. Here are the official results now in race number seven. It's official. One, Rymar Jim, fifth. Two, Rapid Chuck, fourth. Three, Rika's Playboy was eighth. Four, Granite Gambler, sixth. Five, Princetown Joy, seventh. Six, BJ Odyssey, finished second. Seven, Rockland to Heritage, third. Eight, Captain Basie, the race winner. Fractions of 29 and two. 101 and one. 133 and one. And the mile in 202, three fives. Rechecking five, four, eight, six, seven, two, three, one. The track, eighth race, open mares, sponsored by Tropic Kiwi. One Miss Lori is owned by John Eldon Green, John Irvine, the driver is Shane Bernard. Number two, Flaming Beauty is owned by Gordon McLean of Winslow, Daryl McLean drives. Number three, Deadly Dieppe. Owned by Clifford Emitter from Sydney, Nova Scotia. Driven tonight by David O'Brien. Four CL's Glory. Owned by Betty Hicken and Bert Hannibal of Montague. Bill Hicken driving. Number five, Tucson Melody. Owned by Milton Downey of St. John. Driven by Steve Mason. Six is Now I'm Laughing. Owned by Gary Poulton of Charlottetown. Vince Poulton drives. Seven is EB's Angel. On the Brent Munch of Vernon, driven by Gary Chappell. Seven minutes wagering time, just seven minutes for eighth race post time. Evening's eighth race, open mares class. From the rail out, Miss Laurie and Shane Burnett. Flaming Beauty, Daryl McLean. Deadly Dieppe, David O'Brien. Seagull's Glory and Bill Hicken. Tucson Melody for Steve Mason. Now I'm Laughing and Vince Poulton. Outside, E.B.'s Angel and Gary Chappell. It's eighth race, open mares race time. 
Your offense facing good start and leaving from the middle at CL's Glory at the rail, Miss Glory. Then on the outside, Tucson Melody. And towards the rail, it's Flaming Beauty. And around the turn they go. And neatly to the rail goes Now I'm Laughing Fifth. Pacing out at six now. Deadly D up the early trailer. EB's Angel. They're going to the opener. And Miss Glory sailing right to the front now for Shane Bernard. From the outside, Tucson Melody caught out second. Third up the rail is Flaming Beauty racing fourth. Now I'm laughing. Then in fifth, CL's Glory. The opener was 28 and four. Midway around that upper turn. This is for the first time. Over to three eights and the leader there. That is Miss Lori. Tucson Melody. Gets the parking ticket. Caught out second. Third up the rail is Flaming Beauty. On the outside, fourth. That's Now I'm Laughing. Fifth up the rail, Seagull's Glory. Sixth on the outside, Deadly DF. Trailing the field, EB's Angel is seventh. Opening half, 59 Two fifths, midway around the turn, over to five eight, Miss Lloyd at the rail, Tucson, Melody, the long mile, from the outside, in at the rail, Flaming Beauty, getting a journey now, in the pocket third, sent three wide, fourth, now I'm laughing, Seagull's Glory, fifth, EB's Angel between horses, Deadly Dieppe, far outside, trailing by the three quarters, they were there in 1.30, and one fifth round the turn second and final time eighth of a mile left to go miss lori is still the leader now i'm laughing at the outside flaming beauty she's headed for the passing lane third they're in deep stretch now now i'm laughing flaming beauty on the inside here they are She raced tonight. Yeah, I'm very pleased with the way she raced tonight. She raced big every week, but uh, a couple of good mares got rough trips tonight, so she can, she got the job done, got the passing lane, makes a big difference. What about the class and how competitive it's been here at the CDP amongst these types of horses? Oh, it's been a great mares class this past year, and with Atlantic Lotto putting on mares series, it's uh, brought the, some people went out and bought some new horses and brought a lot of interest around for it. Super steer tonight, too, as she got a great trip, and you got it to get into that passing lane. Uh, tell me how that opened up for you and when you thought you might have a shot to win. Oh, as soon as Stevie was parked for most of the mile and she was getting the perfect two-hole trip, I kind of thought she'd be half tough through the lane. Congratulations. That's a great mile. Thanks very much. That's Daryl McLean with Flaming Beauty. We'll go back upstairs to track announcer Vance Cameron. Now returning to the winner's circle in race number eight, the two-entry Flaming Beauty, Bay Pacing Mayor 5 by Basie. From the Knightley Blue Chip Dam, Knightley Flame, owned by Gordon McLean of Winslow, Daryl McLean training and driving, mayor scoring tonight in two minutes and one-fifth. On to Flaming Beauty in the eighth. Down at trackside, the cooler presentation. From Tarapa Kiwi, sponsored by Atlas Wines. Here are the official results now in race eight officially. One Miss Lori fourth. Two Flaming Beauty, the race winner. Three Deadly Dieppe finished sixth. Four, CL's Glory, third. Five, Tucson Melody was seventh. Six, Now I'm Laughing, finished second. Seven, EB's Angel, fifth. Fractions were 28 and four. 59 and two. 130 and one. The mile in two minutes, one fifth. On the track and parading, ninth race, sponsored by the PEI Emporium. Clinch Joy is one, owned by Catherine McNeil, Gary McDonald driving. Rums Victory two, on Belie Jewel, the driver Len McGuigan. Number three is Technophobe, owned by Blair Laffin. The driver is Robert Laffin. Four is CL's Premier Wit, owned by Dale and Ronnie Rennie, driven tonight by Norris Rogers. Five is Lark Whistle, owned by Garth Toombs, driven by Walter Chevrolet. Number six is Erie Bale Star. The owner is Willis Silliger. The driver is Gary Chappell. Number seven, Mysterious Ways. Kenny Arsenault is driving for Brian Sterling of St. John. Number eight is Jaguar Knight. Owned by Wayne Hill. Joe Barrio in the sulky. Eight minutes before ninth race post time.
Well, you just saw another great open mares race here at the uh, Charlottetown Driving Park and another great stretch drive. Daryl McLean with that textbook drive uh, gets to the winner's circle with Flaming Beauty. And we're joined now by a gentleman who's been to the winner's circle several times this year in Atlanta, Canada. Uh, certainly one of the top drivers right now in the region in Todd Trites. And Todd, uh, you had a big win earlier this afternoon already, uh, starting the week off on a high note. You guided PH Happy Cat to victory in uh, Atlantic Sire Stakes action for the three year old Phillies. Tell us a little bit about that race. Uh, she was used pretty hard early. Yeah, uh, I get an opportunity to, to catch drive this mare again uh, for the second time and she uh, drew outside post. There was a horse scratch that I ended up leaving from post six and really didn't think I had much of an option other than to leave out of there with her. Went into the first turn pretty good, get hung three deep and straightened away down the backside. Jill and I battled just for a minute and then he uh, he let me go and took the two-hole trip behind me, but with the notion that I keep going, and uh, and I did just that, and we ended up cutting a pretty good half. And uh, coming up on Monday night, you'll have your first ever drive in a Gold Cup and Saucer trial, and it's uh, coming up behind a horse called Dexter's Lion. Uh, you've had him now for a couple of starts. He's been pretty impressive. Tell us uh, what you can about him. Well, his first two starts, he ended up uh, cutting cutting both the miles and ended up doing all the work and uh, raced him a little bit different in uh, Truro last week. Didn't really work out because I ended up getting locked in, but I really get an opportunity to see how much this horse can pace coming out of a hole. And uh, in with the group of horses he's in with Monday night, we're probably going to get a chance to see him uh, race out of a hole again, but uh, really looking forward to it. Pretty excited about the, an opportunity to sit behind a horse like him on a you know a bunch of field uh, horses like that. It's probably... Probably the toughest of the, the three ones, but I've got to race the good horses either Monday or Saturday, so we'll, we'll get a chance to see how, how much this lion horse can go. So uh, despite not winning in Truro, you were pretty happy with the way you raced? Uh, really, I was uh, more happy after the race was over than going into it because I knew what kind of horse I had. Um, I, I knew he was good off the front, but now I know he's probably better out of the hole, and I had suspect that maybe he would be. And, uh, you know, he's going to have to go a big, big mile on Monday night, but I, I think, uh, you know, I've got an outside shot. Maybe I can get in the big one. And uh, it's your first, uh, t as we alluded to earlier, your first drive in a Gold Cup and Saucer trial. It's got to be exciting. Tell us what it means to you. Oh, well, I've been standing over the fence and watching, uh, watching these guys go behind the gate on Saturday night here for, for as long as I can remember. And it's just, you know, it'd be a nice, you know, it'd be a thrill to get in the final, but it's nice just to even have a chance to be on a horse like this and, and get in the elimination. Hopefully we'll uh, be there next Saturday night. And uh, you've had a big year so far. You've been battling for the lead uh, in the Maritimes, and uh, it, it's been a, a great uh, campaign for you this summer. Tell us what, what uh, you know, has turned it around for you uh, in the last year or two and, and has made you uh, get to the top here in the region. Well, I, I guess I've always been charted as being an aggressive driver, and I guess with maybe experience I've learned to curb that a little bit and be patient when I need to be. But really, uh, first and foremost, I'm driving for good trainers and I'm sitting behind better horses. And uh, just uh, finally, any pre-race strategy uh, Monday night, do you, do you have a, an idea of how you think the race might unfold and what your strategy might be? Well, uh, my strategy is going to be to get to the final. How I do that, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to have a look at the lines on some of these horses that are coming in. I've never seen before. I know that probably the three best horses in the Maritimes, uh, Cam, uh, Michael McDonald's horse. Uh, Cam's El Country Boy. Cam's Country Boy, right. right uh, El Perfecto <laughs> and mine are probably the three best in the Maritimes, and we're racing against you know some of the, some of the better outside horses. So we're going to have to just see how that shapes up. But I've got a good position. And uh, we're going to get a, you know, we'll have an opportunity anyway. If we get beat, we're going to be out and racing. All right, Todd, best of luck uh, on Monday night. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, we're less than three minutes now from post time on race number nine. And as we uh, get set for post time here, a pretty uh, good looking tote board. The current betting favorite, number eight, Jaguar Knight, the nine year old veteran, making his fourth start of the season.
Evening's ninth race. Going to the starting gate. And that starting gate on the move. One clinch joy, Gary McDonald. Two rums victory, Len McGuigan. Technofold three, Robert Laffin. Seagull's premier weight four, Norris Rogers. Lark Whistle five, Walter Chevery. Erievale Star six, Gary Chappell. Mysterious Ways is seven, and Kenny Arsenal. Trailing eight, Jaguar Knight for Joe Barrio. Ninth race, race time. They're off and pacing, back leaving, that's Clint's Joy. They're into the turn and for the lead at Seagull's Premier Wit. In at the rail, that is Rums Victory. Seagull's Premier Wit on the run. And Gary Chappell does a neat job of steering Erievale Star out of the way. And he pulled him right to the two hole now. In at the rail, third is Jaguar Knight, pacing up into fourth, Lark Whistle. Now at the inside and racing fifth, that is Mysterious Ways, pacing sixth. Technophobe, Clint's Joy is seventh, and a Premier's, CO Premier's wit. In the backfield is the trailer. They arrive at that opening quarter. Rums victory, and Barney McGuigan, 30 and a three the quarter. Erievale star in at the rail, going second. Moving to the outside, here comes Jaguar Knight now. Pacing up on the outside to be fourth is Lark Whistle. Then in fifth, Mysterious Ways, racing from six. As they turn down the stretch, they're approaching the opening half mile, and Jaguar our knight hustles right to the front now for Barrio. In at the rail second, that is Rum's victory. Erivale Star is third, Lark Whistle on the move fourth. Mysterious Ways is fifth, Technophobe is sixth. That in seventh, that is Clint's Joy. Seals Premier with trailing, opening half in a minute. Four fifths by the five eighths, and now they turn to three quarters. And the leader is Jaguar Knight. Rum's victory is second at the rail. Lark Whistle third on the outside, fourth on the inside. Erievale Star, Mysterious Ways is now moving up fifth. Pacing six, Clint's Joy, Technophobe seventh, Seagull's Premier Wit trailing the field. They're on by the three quarters in one thirty and a three fifths. Third quarter, 29 and four, eighth of a mile to go. Jaguar Knight showing some of that old sire stake form now. Leading them on down the lane from the outside of Rums Victory. Third at the rail is Erievale Star. Here comes the finish it's Jaguar Knight here they are Now returning to the winner's circle from the ninth race is number eight, Jaguar Knight. Bay Pacing Stallion, nine years by Knightly Blue Chip. From the Albatross Dam, Dana Hanover. On by Wayne Hill of Fredericton, New Brunswick. Trained by Doug Falkins. In the hands of Jill Barry all tonight. He's a winner in two minutes, four fives. On eight, Jaguar Knight in the ninth. Down at trackside. PEI Emporium with their cooler presentation here in the ninth. Now the official racing results from race nine officially. 
One clinch joy seventh, two rums victory third. Three technofold was sixth. Four seals premier wit finished eighth. Five lark whistle fifth. Six Arivale star second. Seven mysterious ways fourth. Eight Jack Y Knight the winner. Fractions 30 and three. One minute four fifths. 130 and three. And the mile in two minutes and four fifths. Rechecking seven, three, six, eight, five, two, four, one. The tenth race coming next with no changes. Now we'll go down to trackside. Here's Chris Connor. Vance Cameron, uh, we're joined by the owner of Jaguar Knight, Wayne Hill. Uh, Wayne, I wonder how it feels to see this horse make it back into the winner's circle. Nice to see him back. Nice to see him back. I know uh, Doug Falkins has done an awful lot of work for you, uh, the trainer of this horse. Uh, Jaguar Knight, still the fastest maritime bred pacer on record. Of course, he's tied with Chatham Hoochie. Mm -hmm. But uh, what can you tell me about uh, the job that Doug has done to get this horse back to the races? Well, we started in December, and he just let him jog, and, and uh, so he's seen how he's going to make out, and took four or five, six months, but we're pretty happy now, I guess. So. That's uh, super, and I know that it's a thrill for you, too, to watch uh, some of his Colts racing. Uh, yeah. Perfect Jaguar is a good one that Emmons McKay is campaigning right yeah, now. And, and Jags Desperado won this afternoon in St. John, so it's uh, nice to see Offsprings do well. That's right. There's no doubt about it. Congratulations, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much to Wayne Hill, uh, and he is the owner of Jaguar Knight, doing some breeding as well, and uh, it's great to see this horse with such a storied past back in the winner's circle. For the first time, he had almost five years off from racing and makes it back tonight in two minutes and four-fifths. Entering the track of the 10th race, Pacers and their drivers, sponsored by the club. Golf and Games Lounge, one popular cork, home to the right-wing holdings of Dartmouth, driven tonight by Kenny Arsenal. Two is Island Samson, owned by David Rose of Mount Stewart and SF McDonald of Morrell, driven by Gary Chappell. Three is Happy Family, owned by Dr. Jim Shive of Shubin Ackney, Trevin Shive driving. Four is Alan Stephen, owned by Lear Arsenal of Richmond, driven by Ronnie McLean. Number five, Rhonda's Buddy, is owned by Eugene Carr from Charlottetown. The driver is Michael McDonald. Six is Daylon Rogue, owned by Ivan McMillan of Valeri. Gary McDonald drives. Number seven, Rick Gambler, owned by Shelley Hennessy of Charlottetown, the driver Jody Hennessy. Number eight, Classic Rock, owned by the Boss Hog, stable of Dartmouth, Norris Rogers in the Sulky. Six minutes to post time. Race number ten's on the way to the starting gate with Popier Cork on the rail and Kenny Arsenal. Island Samson is two and Gary Chappell. Happy Family 3, Trevin Shive. Island Stephen 4, Ronnie McLean. Rhonda's Buddy 5, Mike McDonald. Daylon Rogue is 6, and Gary McDonald. Rick Ambler 7, Jody Hennessy. Trailing from 8, Classic Rock. Norris Rogers, here they come. They're off and racing and off stride. Pop your cork up the rail. Into the turn. That is round his buddy leaving out. Second towards the inside. Happy family is leaving from the inside. Third is Island Samson on the turn and racing up to them. Fourth as they arrive at the opening. Eighth is Daylon Rogue. Pacing fifth, Island Stephen. Then in sixth. Turning to the backstretch, on route to the opening quarter mile. In six is Rick Gambler, seventh classic rock, and the thriller. Pop your cork is eighth after the break, leaving over to the opening quarter mile. And that ageless wonder on the front end is Happy Family in line to Dr. Trevin Shive. The open air as they race by the quarter 29 and four. Now on the outside and set to drive on to challenge. Island Stephen is coming to call. Round his buddy is third at the rail, racing fourth now on the outside. That is Rick Gambler. Island Samson got a shuffle back to fifth at the rail, pacing up on the outside for six is Classic Rock, then in seventh Daylon Rogue, and the trailer, that is Popier Cork in eighth, by the opening half, and Island Stephen on the outside, Happy Family keeps them there in 59 and four, they're at the 5 eights now, and it's Happy Family along the rail, the leader Island Stephen came early, and he's caught out, third at the rail is Rhonda's Bunny, pacing fourth on the inside Island Samson, three wide there goes Classic Rock, 
now fifth. Then in sixth between horses, that is Rick Gambler. Seventh at the rail, Delon Rogue and the trailer on the outside, Pop Your Cork. They're four wide now. Three quarters up in a 129 and a one. Eighth of a mile left to go, and it's happy family turning for home. Second on the outside, that is Island Samson, and they're tangled up in the backfield now. Deep in the stretch, happy family, Island Samson, it's happy family. Here they are. Now returning into the winner's circle in race number 10 is the three entry, Happy Family. A bay pacing stallion, he's an 11 year old son of Abercrombie. From the Albatross Dam, Becky's Love. On by Dr. Jim Shive of Shibanak, Grenade, Nova Scotia. Dr. Trevin Shive is the trainer and the driver. Had this veteran campaigner on top at all stations tonight, winning in 158. And three fives on three happy family in the tenth. On the track side, the cooler presentation being made by the club golf and games lounge. Happy family, the winner in 158. Three fives. family one of those old campaigners just keeps uh, surprising week in and week out. And tonight he had to do it the hard way. Yeah, he raced good tonight. He raced tough his last trip, too, so uh, it's good to see the old horse keep going. He likes to race, so as long as he likes to race and he's sound, we'll keep racing him. Uh, I was going to ask you, at that age, and, and uh, he's had a lot of tough miles in his career, uh, is there anything uh, special you have to do week in and week out to keep him uh, on top of his game? No, he takes care of himself. He's a good old horse. Sign of class, uh, obviously. Uh, Trev's having some fun driving him, too, so and it worked out good. And uh, also uh, on the breeding side of things, uh, he's been breeding a lot of mares, and this year especially, he's had a lot of success. Uh, you have to be pretty happy with that. Well, he hasn't been breeding very many mares, but uh, I'm pretty pleased the way his colts are going, yes. Yeah. And uh, we're going to see him uh, continue all season long. Uh, any more well, plans? Uh, as long as he stays down and Trevor wants to race him, we'll race him. And uh, quickly as well, you had a big win earlier this afternoon with PH uh, Happy Cat. Tell us your feelings on that. Well, that's Trev's horse. I wish it was mine, but that was a good win, too. Any win is good, you know, so we're happy. We'll take them as we can get them. So you're having a good start to Old Homie. Yes, that's right. It's been couldn't be better. <laughs> All right, congratulations, Jim. We'll let you go and uh, join your family. Let's uh, swing it back trackside for the race replay. Interference on Four Island, Stephen, during the stretch drive. Here are the official racing results now in the 10th race officially. One Pompier Cork finished 7th place 6th. Two Island Sampson finished 3rd place 2nd. Three Happy Family, the race winner. Four Island Stephen did not finish accident. Five Ronda's Buddy finished 2nd and was disqualified for bearing in and causing the interference in Four Island Stephen in the stretch drive. Six Dillon Rogue finished 5th place 4th. Seven Rick Ambler finished 6th place 5th. Eight Classic Rock finished fourth place third. Fraction of 29 and four, 59 and four. 129 and one, the mile and one, 58 and three. 11th race is the APM Gold Cup and Saucer Trial One. Number seven, Run the Hub, the driver Mark Webby has an A license. 11 minutes before post time. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the track, Pacers and the drivers in tonight's 11th race. It's the APM Gold Cup and Saucer Trial One. Number one, freshly squeezed, owned by Bill Andrew of Calgary, Alberta. Brian Andrew in the sulky. Number two is Pushing Daisies, owned by Wayne Ellis of Stewiak. Nova Scotia driven tonight 
by Phil Pinckney. Number three, Force of Life, home of the forward pass stable, North Providence, Rhode Island, Mike McDonald Gubbing. Four is Glenn Royden N, owned by Greg Peck of Newton, Pennsylvania. Ken Abramowitz from Langhorn, Pennsylvania, driven tonight by Walter Chevery. Five is Sunny Side of Street, owned by Glendon Smith of Truro, Nova Scotia, the driver Rod Jamison. Number six, you're the man, GB, owned by Dr. Ian Moore of Winslow and Jerome Hayward of Bedford, Nova Scotia, Doc Moore driving. Number seven, run the hub, owned by Wayne Webby of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Mark Webby in the sulky. Five minutes wagering time on the 11th race. It's trial one. Wager now. This week, and the third place finisher will also have a shot. Two of the three third place finishers will be drawn at random from the three eliminations, two of them tonight, one Monday, and uh, they will also find themselves into the final race for a purse of almost $60,000. Enjoy the first eliminator. Tonight's the 11th race, the APM Gold Cup and Saucer Trial 1. One is freshly squeezed and Brian Andrew. Pushing daisies two, Phil Pinckney. Three Force of Life, Mike McDonald. Glenn Royden in four, Walter Chevery. Five, Sunny Side of Street, Rod Jamison. You're the man, GB6 for Doc Moore. Outsider on the hub seven, Mark Webby. Here they come. Off and pacing, and the lone mayor is beating them out now. In at the rail, freshly squeezed to the front, pushing daisies on the outside. Now, second, up into third, force of life. Glenn Rodden in fourth at the rail. Run the hub on the outside is fifth, then in sixth. Sunny side of street, you're the man. The early trailer seventh on their way to the quarter mile. The early setter freshly squeezed. In line to Brian Andrew, they're clear by two and a half. Second up the rail now is Pushing Daisies, racing third. That is Force of Life, racing fourth. Opening quarter, 28, one fifth. Over now to three eight. Freshly squeezed, and the mayor is driving off on the board. Clear by four. In at the rail, second, pushing daisies. Here comes Force of Life being sent to the outside. Now third, Glenn Royden in. Sent out fourth, sunny side of street, fifth. Run the hub, six. You're the man. In at the rail, seventh. Opening half mile, 56. Three fives at the five eight now. Freshly squeeze on top and force of life sent to the outside. Now second. Glenn Royden in. Third on the outside. Pushing daisies. Fourth at the rail. Now fifth. Sunny side of street. You're the man. Six at the rail. Run the hub. Now trailing. Three quarters. Force of life. The leader. One twenty. 
36 and 4, eighth of a mile to go. Here comes trial one for Civil Life at the rail. Glenn Royden in on the outside, the only one with a shot at him now. They're in deep stretch, coming to the finish, and Glenn Royden in. Trial one for Chevrolet. Here they are. It's the feeling everybody that's ever raced in the Maritimes. Eh? It's a race everybody wants to win. And uh, the horse uh, has not raced on a half-mile track since April at Freehold. Uh, he didn't seem to have any troubles with it tonight. No, he, he, he got around real good. Greg had him real good. and I was just real lucky I got a chance. Eh? And I thank Greg, that's all. How do you think his chances might be uh, in the final coming up uh, a week from tonight? We'll just have to wait and see what the draw is like. He, he's a real nice old horse, eh? and, and Greg knew that. He'd been looking for a while for a horse like that, and he found that, you know, a horse that could get around a half-mile track, and, and he's a trip horse. He, he's got one brush, and he got the job done tonight, so next week, you never know. Eh? Well, he had a super trip. Uh, congratulations on a great drive. Thank you very much. That's Walter Chevery. We'll allow him to enjoy the Winter Circle presentation with Glenn Royd on end on his way back. After a super mile, we'll go back upstairs to track announcer Vance Cameron. Ladies and gentlemen, on his way to the winner's circle, from the 11th race, the APM Gold Cup and Saucer Trial 1, number 4, Glenn Royden, and Bay Pacing Gelding, 8 years by Royden Glenn, from the Royden Albatross Dam, Royden Princess, owned by Greg Peck, Newton, Pennsylvania. Ken Abrowitz from Langhorn, Pennsylvania. Greg Peck does the training. Walter Chevrolet's gonna get a gold cup and saucer ride one week from tonight. Time for the mile, 155, four fifths on four. Glenn Royden in, in the 11th. Down the track.